it's the old fella back if you're new here, old Mr. B, or whatever you want to call me. As you can see behind me, a bloodstained reputation. There they are behind me. Um, and obviously, I had a chat with them. Uh, lovely people they are. Anyway, so uh, this is what I do. As we know, I do these chats and things. So um, I'm going to shut up, aren't I? Let's just get over to the, over to the chat we go. Hey up everybody. Today I have with me Bloodstained Reputation. So if you'd like to introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Ray. I play guitar and sing in Bloodstained Reputation. I am Chesk and I am the uh, bassist in the bands. I am Baz. I'm backing vocals on lead guitar. And I'm Lucas. I play the drums for the band. <laughs> right. Okay, first question. I'm, I always ask this one. How did you come up with the name? I kind of came up with it. We originally were going to be called something else. Oh, um, say what we used to be called. Yeah, sure. We, we were, used to be called Thorns of a Rose. <laughs> yeah, we came up, we did a band name generator at that point and we came up with Thorns of a Rose. Bear, we couldn't play instruments at this point. We just loved the idea of being in a band. And then I came up with the, I came up with Bloodstained Reputation as an album name. And then everyone liked it so much they were like why don't we just call the band that and it seems to have stuck and it works pretty well people it's like quite a recognizable name now <laughs> yeah yeah no I, I understand that it's like how, how you get a name it's like with my channel old mr b the reason it's that is somebody when i was at work called me mr b and i thought well i'm old so that was it <laughs> <laughs> so right now then i always ask this sort of thing as well Right, as as guitarist, how many guitars do you have? Do you have? I have nine, I believe, <laughs> if I'm correct. <laughs> it's no problem. I have thirteen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've got. I haven't got that many, to be fair. I think I've got five: one acoustic and three electrics. That's four. four. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I. I was like, unless we count like. I technically own everything my boyfriend owns as well. So no, <laughs> technically we'll count, we'll count those as well. Right. Um, do you, do you actually name your guitars? You do more than I do. Yeah. I've got one specifically that's called Henry. Cause it just, I got it cried and it looks like a Henry. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. have. I have two Schecter guitars, and two of my favourite guitar players who play Schecter are Alex Snowden and Julia Pierce. Um, and I named one of them Snowden and the other one Pierce because of those guitarists. They're like really cool female rock and metal guitarists that yeah. I appreciate a lot. Oh, yeah, you have, um, she has a Kramer that reminds her of the Blackville Brides guitarist. Not Steel Panther then? No. Satchel. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I've got a couple of Schecters. One's a seven string. And I do have a bass guitar, five string bass. But I'm no musician anyway. I just do it for fun. <laughs> you, you may see the silly things I do on the intro. You know, it's um, it's just me. The older you get, the dafter you get. Um, <laughs> right. Bass player. Do you have... Yeah, just uh, I only have uh, two bass guitars at the moment, so, and I don't think I've actually named any of them, so. No, it's, it's all right. It, it's it's generally, generally a female thing where they name, the, 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 I mean, I've, I've got okay, I've named one guitar, but I'm, I can't say what it's on here, what it is. Yeah. It's a, uh, I've got a Gibson uh, Nighthawk and I've got an Epiphone copy of it, but it's uh, it's got problems. So I called it. That's something else, Hawk. Um, beginning with S. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, right. Oh, you don't name your drums, do you? No, not particularly, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, because drumming, you see, now this, this, what, what I like about all this is, right, um, Sorry, Lucas, this isn't having to go at you. It's nice to see females 
because men have held females back for so long, right? Um, and and I react to a lot of female Japanese bands. They're really, really taking off there. And it's nice to see that it's happening here. Because, come on, let's face it, it's been a male-dominated industry for years. And, um, you know, as far as I can see, men have just held women back. And it's great to see, you know, that what you're doing. It's I, I really like it. And, and make sure you keep putting stuff up on YouTube so I can react to it. That's another <laughs> thing as well. Because I, I support, this is what I'm about. I'm about supporting local or, or new bands from all over the world. And if I can get to interview people, I will do. This is why I like to do this, to promote. Sometimes you get a new band, you put it up, you don't. it doesn't get many views. But you'll always get somebody saying, ooh, I like these. But uh, with an interview, you tend to get more people watching it. And then it, it's sort of, because all the information I put in will be about you, your channel. Da -da, and so they can go and check it out, you see. They'll get that out of the way. Right, so you own, um, oh, mate, I'm going to look here. Yeah, Baz, you own nine guitars. What makes, what make of guitars do you have? I've got an Ibanez that I can't stand. Yeah. He's broken. Two LTDs, one Kramer, a Harley Benton, <laughs> and. Don't laugh. Two Les Pauls. Right, okay. Did that come to nine or am I missing one? Oh, I'm missing Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's all right. I have a Harley Benton. All right. Um, I have, so I have some less pulls. I think it's three or four. I've lost half. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, right. So sort of ampli amplifier. What, what, what amplifiers do you use and things like that? I've got two line six. They were my like starter ones, a Vox Valvatronic one, and then an orange head for a Granger cab. Right, I use a Helix. I've got no amplifiers. <laughs> yeah, bass player, go on, go for it. Um, make makes makes of bass. Uh, I've got a Yamaha. Uh, I believe it's a TBRX one seven four. Um, it was kind of my starting out um bass because. Before I actually bought that, I bought a um, second-hand one that wasn't really suitable to play, um, which kind of went in the bin as soon as I got it. And then the Epiphone, it's an SG style, and that's like my really nice one that I like using for like studio work and that. So, yeah. Uh, do you do you use a pick all the time, or do you play with your fingers? Uh, I mostly go for pick style. Uh, no, sorry, uh, finger style. Uh, pick style I tend to use for more like heavier songs and things right. like that. Right. Now you'll be liked then, because <laughs> everybody's going. Well, shouldn't use a pick on a bass, but um, but yeah. Right. Over to Ray. Right. So... Don't worry, Lucas. We'll get to you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> He's vibing in the back. <laughs> um. Yeah. So guitars. I have. Three oh no, I have got five guitars. I just remember I have three Schecters. Um one is I have two Schecter omens, one is the like SG style one, I forget the full name of that one. And then I've got another one which is one of their like starter guitars which I first got. I forgot that I don't have that because it's currently broken. because <laughs> it decided to stop working on one of our last gigs. And then I have an Epiphone and an app and an Epiphone acoustic. I mainly just stick to Schecter though, because it just, I like the feel of it in comparison. And as for amps and stuff, I use Blackstar. I'm, I love Blackstar so much. Um, I actually got gifted a Blackstar head from our friend Jake from the band Glitches. They were a really cool a street punk band um, that we played with a few times on their actual tours. Hold on a minute. <clears throat> you just set me off now. Uh, right, what's the <laughs> name of the band? Glitches. Uh, and are they on um, YouTube? They should be on everything, I believe. Punk, I'm not entirely sure about YouTube, they should be. But when you say it's punk band, that's it, because I'm off to see a punk band in Brighton. Yeah. 
are on um, July. The from the from South Korea. Oh, right. oh, cool. Three three young ladies, and they've got the really spiky hair and everything, called Rum Kicks. And I did an interview with them, and last year I went down to Brighton to see them and met them. Oh, cool. Um, so, so you know, because they're going to do the, uh, the 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 thing at the Rebellion Festival as well at Blackpool. Cool. And they're on the main stage this year because they went down a storm last year. But anyway, so that's that's another thing. But any 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 bands and things like that, you know, this is how I find out about some because to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know what's happening in the UK at the moment. I'm too busy in Japan, Indonesia, and sort of everywhere else around the world. And so it's nice to know. And and if the local sort of bands, that's another thing. Where where what area are you from? We oh, are from well, we're technically based living wise is in Doncaster but in music kind of base we mainly play Sheffield because it has the best scene so in ways we count kind of all of South Yorkshire because we go around mainly either Rotherham and Sheffield for performing yeah so we kind of count it as most of South Yorkshire slash anywhere nearby. yeah 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 because I'm in I'm in Leicestershire yeah. um so you know Midlands that's where yeah. she's from <laughs> well, well not Leicestershire but yeah, she's from the Midlands <laughs> yeah yeah so um another thing well a quick one well I should have asked this how did you all meet as a band you know to get together as a band <laughs> oh, oh my gosh speak. well me and Ray met in like high school but we, no, we didn't meet in high school. met we through met dance in high school. I was gonna say primary but we got to know each other better right, technically else. right <laughs> what actually happened was i was friends with someone else and i got introduced to baz in like when i was in year six year five or six and then we all became friends in oh, secondary school i was i'm a year oh yeah okay i was um i was a year above um baz in school um and one of my I weren't the most smartest kid, so I got kept down a year for a while, and then I got moved straight back up. Um, so that's how I knew her. It well, I weren't the smartest; it was more because I couldn't be bothered. I was too busy in my own world. So <laughs> we've known each other for years, and then we um, ended up doing dance lessons together because I moved dance schools, and she was the only person I knew at this dance school that was in my like kind of age range. And we kind of spent most of our time together from that point on. And then I went up to college and I would do a musical theatre for a bit. And then the year later, you came up and did music. And that's how we met you. Yay. Carry on, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, me and Baz basically uh, met during our musical course on um, at college. And I still to this day do not know how we became I friends. Do, but I just remember you sat but, on the bench. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, we ended up performing together and I actually picked up bass during college because nobody in the course actually played bass and I thought it was an opportunity. And then I had, and then when I met Ray, um, one day, Ray decided to keep whispering in my ear, join my band, join my band, join my band. Yeah, we formed the ba band at this point, technically. We couldn't play, but we had the idea of being like this all girl rock band because we used to have a girl on drums at the start. Um, we've gone through quite a few drummers since then, um, just due to different reasons. Um, We're expendable. <laughs> no, not like not in like a mean way. But sometimes it happens, yeah, you know. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but either way, we were the plan was to be an all girl band, and we obviously met you, and you were the only girl that we've ever met that was interested in actually playing an instrument, other than like us, because it was it's very rare to find people like that. Um, even on our course, there was a very lack of girls on the music course. So I joined the music course a year later and the course really gave us loads of different opportunities. We did like a battle of the bands called Stage Invasion, which was one of our first shows. We used to do college shows together. It was really like learning how to actually play and perform. And prepping us for like the gig world and just understanding and building up our confidence a little bit, so. And our second gig ever, this guy actually turned up to um, as an audience member because he was friends with someone that we knew on the course and he came to see us um, and then I met him again years later because you joined the music course after 
quitting uni and deciding to restart in music. Uni dropout, yeah. Anyway, you can go into the story Same from way. your perspective. From my perspective? Well, I was at college doing graphic design, so I thought once I did that, I was going to go uni to do like architecture and all that, but ended up not enjoying it like all. So I thought I'll go into music, do whatever. And then I think my second or third year is when I met you because I was with everyone else beforehand. And then um, they had their second drummer, Drew, at the time. And um, I can't remember exactly what happened, but basically it wasn't available. And um, being like the one of like two drummers on the course, I was asked if I can like learn the EP because they'd like written it by this point and then to perform it live as well as like some covers. I can't remember what covers now, but... Or did we just do four songs? I think we just mainly did four songs because we just started out doing gigs at that point and we were getting them very last minute. We used to play... We play at this place called the Bridge Inn in Rotherham quite often, which is actually where the photo behind you was taken. Yeah. <laughs> and they they kind of broke us out and started doing our first few gigs there. Um, and they'd often ask us if someone drops out or if someone, they needed an opening act for a night. And it was sometimes like, we literally had him have to learn the whole EP within four days because our- Two. <laughs> two. Four <laughs> songs in two days. Okay, two days. Um, right. So, because our drummer weren't available at the time, our drummer now, I mean, he was going to be moving away anyway. Um, so, he, he has since moved away since now. So Yeah, probably, Drew's got like... It worked out well in the favour because he's been wanting to move for years and he said he was going to. And we discovered recently that he's moved. So, Which is quite nice. we're quite yeah. happy for him. Oh, that's a new picture. Oh, <laughs> chop your heads off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's another picture. That's another thing. I grab pictures, uh, um, if you like. When you when you do a reaction, then you're looking for pictures. Sometimes screenshots just aren't good enough, you know. Yeah. So then you, you start looking. Well, are they all on Facebook? Are they here? Are they there? Yeah, get some pictures. But th this one's a bit tall, so I should have modified this one before I did it <laughs> because now your heads are gone. Um, well, can, we can rectify that. No, I... I because I always use a green screen, you see. Um I'm I'm always messing with green screens. Messing about. And you're on about school, right? Back when I was at school in the sixties. <laughs> um, I'm dyslexic, right? They didn't know that. So life became very difficult for me, you know, that sort of thing. And if you picked a guitar up, you'd get, what do you want one of them for? Yeah. Mm. You know, I wasn't into the Beatles. Anybody likes the Beatles, they, they know I'm not a Beatles fan. They don't care how good they were. I was more more your Hendrix type into into rock music and stuff like that, you see. Yeah. So it's interesting how you, you, you all got together. And you've all gone music school and things, have you, then to... Um, yeah, we went to mainly just college. None of us are trained as musicians, though. We're all self-taught. I mean, his dad was a drummer, so that's kind of how he started drumming and had his first drum kit. None of my family are musical and none of your guys' family no. are musical. We all just did it because we all got very, like, we got into music in as teenagers and it was, like, something that spoke to us a lot and we found in ways in changed it. our lives yeah. and that and made us want to make music that we actually care about as opposed to some of the music that we hear on a day-to-day -day basis basis yeah yeah no it's all right i'll tell you i'm, I'm self-taught um i'm self-taught because uh back then so for me for reading books and things trying to learn i just taught myself and i just do my own thing i mean yeah. i do i do music and stuff i mean like my intros and things like that um, that's about me limit an intro to try and do it any further and then it sort of all goes like a jigsaw oh no that's not going to fit with that that's, you know so but um but i just do it for fun yeah i mean i started this when covid hit right and um i'll tell you what it's fun it's fun doing this mm -hmm. um you know um but uh this this is what it's about and I'm, I, I like to promote bands so, so, and how long? How long have you been together as a band? Uh, this lineup. Well, this lineup. It's been about nearly two years in August. Yeah, but as probably a, close to a year and a half. But the band technically formed in twenty seventeen, though. 
Um, so we've been like this line up to um, like a year and a half to two years. And then we formed in 2017, which was basically just us two <laughs> wanting to do something music related. And you got a guitar for your 15th birthday. I'm glad you remember. Um, <laughs> I didn't start playing guitar till a good year later. Partly why most of, we started our YouTube channel a year later. Partly why most of those videos don't exist anymore <laughs> because I had only started playing guitar at that point and it was very it was very harsh on the ears to say the least. I didn't understand what tuning was. I didn't understand what notes were. I barely knew how to play anything. So um, most of that is, thank God, gone. So we don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> but it was nice. We did build a community of people that actually believed that we could actually do yeah, something. And get somewhere. They were glad that there were women. Yeah, they were glad to see girls wanting to do something as opposed to just like, usually if you go find cover bands on YouTube, yeah. if there's girls, they're usually the singer. Um, whereas this is like a full, at the time we were also a full girl band or we're a girl front line, which um, I think rare. it is quite rare. Yeah, there's very it, few. It, it is over like here, that. yeah. Do you know the thing about you ladies, the difference between the, the, the females and the males? Ladies don't have egos. They don't have egos. Whereas the men, you've always got it where, like, the singer, you know, all the camera's got to be on me all the time, you know, and and they're trying to outdo each other. Whereas if you, like, what I react to now, if it's a female band, even the drummer, the poor drummer that's stuck at the back gets camera time. They all mm -hmm. get it. This is the thing. And I always feel sorry for drummers. The drummer is the driver of the band. If he speeds up, everybody else speeds up. If he slows down, he'll slow down. And the poor person is stuck at the back. Yeah. 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 But, I, I, but like I mean... He's stuck at the back. I just get to, like, do my own thing, even though, like, I'm the driving force at times. I'm so, <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's true. I mean, like, Def Leppard, obviously because the drummer lost his arm and what they did, they put him on a pedestal, didn't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which, which, is, which, is, which is great. So a pedestal, that's what you need on your drums. <laughs> uh, I'm here. <laughs> um, so I will say one thing. That it's kind of nice being in a band where none of us really have egos and we are all like on the same level and playing field. So because we all bring our own like thing to the band. Yeah. So whether that's one of us being majority of the time, the driver or writing the songs or the in-house therapist at times. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's that that is that is good. That is, you know, that you work together. The, this is our, um, it's called longevity. You know, you'll stick together for a long time. Unlike Oasis. Oh, we'll have a fight tonight. Um, um, but but this, is, this, this is what I mean. This is where you get the conflict. And it's so nice to see. And especially over here in, in the UK, to see that you, you ladies are starting to do this. Um, it, it's like, like I say, I mean, talking about learning the guitar, I, I I wouldn't wouldn't know the notes. I learned the patterns, yeah. you know the, mm -hmm. the scales, the patterns, uh, and that. And I do play a lot of the time in drop D anyway, because of <laughs> hand problems. <laughs> right. Anyway, get back to Lucas. Right. Come on. We obviously spoke about his drums. Right. Okay. Ooh. Sorts of things. What drumsticks do you use? What make? Uh, so drumsticks, I use Vic Firth Seven A's, like American Hickory. Because your, your generics are like your 5As and your 7As are a little bit thinner, which I feels more like fluid in the hands, if that makes sense. So you can do like your rudiments and all that. It's just what I prefer. So Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same with everything when you talk about guitars. You can look at a guitar and as soon as you grab the neck, that is the thing you, you, your hand will instantly tell you, oh, yeah, I like this one. Yeah. You know, um, what maker drums? Pearl, yeah, yeah, straight up. <laughs> it's um the one I've got at the minute is what my dad used to have in his old band. It's a Pearl BLX. Don't know like any more specifics apart from that, but um it it is a nice like drum kit. It'll sound great on stage. So, ah, uh, yeah, I've got a question for you. I've never asked this one. How often do you have to change the skins on your drums? <sighs> um, it's not often like guitar strings where that's like once every one or two months or something but um you have to like tune it like every other month and then 
I'd say like six to eight months later, it kind of gets to the point where it's like they kind of get run down. You can still work with them, but I feel like the tone's gone. Yeah, if you want to keep like a studio sound and whatever, then six to eight months later, that's probably when you want to like get new ones. But yeah, yeah. My my only criticism with drummers, right, is some of them tighten that flipping skin on the snare and it's got that so it's too high pitched like and, and that's all yeah. and that's all you can hear yeah. i can't remember the band i watched that that did it for me all i could hear when a you know, live band and again G -g -g -on. no get him off that snare yeah um because uh, and um you know because the, the, these days the, the sound of the bass drum the bass pedal it's changed now it's got it's got a lot better sound to it than what it was years ago sort of thing and and uh, yeah so i'm no drummer but this is just you know i see and a lot of people that come on my channel some of our drummers and so what you've just said they will exactly know what you're talking about yeah <laughs> uh, no. when it does come to skins i specifically use um evan's skins because i did have like a argument with myself like do i prefer evans or do I prefer remos because my dad was a remo kind of guy and then obviously i'd use his skins to like see how it feels and I don't know what it is. It's just like the texture, I guess, of what he had. It's just, uh, it felt weird playing it. And then I went to Evans. I believe I use UV2s specifically. And then on the kick drum, I have EMAD heavyweights, which means nothing to any of you. But um, to me, they just like, they have the right amount of like a bounce, the dark tones and the, I guess, like reverb that can come out of them as well. So. No, I do understand, but in a different way. Yeah. It's like with guitar strings. Yeah, right, I normally like Ernie Ball or Daddario's or whatever. Yeah, so I normally play with tens. Right, I've got a guitar with nines on. Where's my high E string on? I can't feel it. You know, <laughs> that sort that sort of thing. So it's all to do with feel, and especially with a with a drummer. It's all down to feel. Yeah. Have you ever tried having nylon tips on the sticks? I have, and they are the bane of my existence because <laughs> <laughs> I started with wooden um, like tips, and then. Obviously, like nylons can be cheaper at times, so I thought I'd try them on like my electric kit. And every time the tip just kept like flying off on like every song, I was like, I can't do it. Too it's aggressive. <laughs> I am too aggressive. It's just, I can't like make it work. So I've just I've stuck with like wooden tips. Right, I'm gonna make it right. Have you have you ever heard of Juna? Don't ring any bells. Right, she's a Japanese drummer. Right, and. Well, I was doing a reaction to her, and, and the, the screws are falling out of the drum kit. She hits so hard, and she's only about four foot something, <laughs> but flipping awesome. Um, fabulous, some fabulous drummers, you know, out there. But, um, but yeah, so I, I, you know, by obviously reacting to these uh, people, and you start to learn more as well but it's it's great what you're doing I, I like what you I like your sound i like what you're doing you know and i just need to look for some more to react to um let's see like yesterday i did nine reactions i did quite a few i normally i, I used to put three up a day now i put two up or, although today i put four up I, but what well, i had to because on my channel it's got like you know uh you schedule them and it's like, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of, and I'm thinking, hey, oh, now I'll be losing these and I'll forget about them because, you know, it's nearly full of like things that weren't public. <laughs> but, um, well, wait, this, I'm retired. I can do what I want, you know, <laughs> so I'll never go back to work. 50 years of work, you know. I take it you're all working, sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, <laughs> but, but what you really want to do is music full time. Yeah. Yes. ideally yeah yeah that's what we're working towards the amount of times i message the group being like tall <laughs> can we leave yes can i go home yeah th this is it's a passion it's a passion yeah. i mean had i um started well i was in a band years ago but i walked out because the way to do beatles covers to be honest <laughs> and i i wanted to do our own stuff and they called me a punk rocker before punk was invented, I think. Because I always go, no, it's too slow. Come on, let's get in the OS. <laughs> but that was me. That was just me. And uh, then I stopped playing for 20-odd years. And then uh, 
picked the guitar up again and ended up buying loads. I've had more than 13 at one time. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, but yeah, no, this this is this is good. So you have um right, so you've got like you all have your I take it you've all got like your favorite types of microphones to sing in. To be fair, we're not really that picky when it comes to mics. As long as it works. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, a lot of the time you don't really get the, um, at a lot of venues, you don't even get the privilege of having more than like one yeah. mic on stage because um, it's just kind of look of the it's, draw. It's just yeah. wherever you go and like what you have. As long as, as long as there's something that works, then I'm happy with it, to be fair. Um, as long as it doesn't sound completely horrendous, then I'm happy. Uh, but with, with mics, we're pretty, um, pretty chill. We're pretty, pretty chill, we're pretty yeah. fine with it. Of course, it'll be different in studio. Um, yeah. But, um, I mean, we haven't been in studio in about two years, so. Yeah. Which is hopefully going to change. Soon. Yes, hopefully we're going to be together. recording again. Do you have, like, your own studio? Uh, not currently. No. Uh, we're going to, we're planning on recording an album and going to a studio in Sheffield, like, very soon, hopefully by summertime. Um. We thought about making our own studio, but we don't want to like rush into it too much just due to with our situations at the minute. We don't really have the money to be able yeah, to afford yeah, yeah. all the equipment currently. So we, it's just going to be a slow build up. And then we've got to figure out we're all living with our parents still as well. So, well, yeah. apart from you, yeah, I was yeah. you <laughs> the house. you're the uh, you're the one that like left the nest quite early. But um, oh, well, now you know where to build the studio. Technically. If you didn't live a million miles away, yeah. but like, yeah, yeah, the one that lives the furthest away from us all is the one that has their own house. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I li- I mean, I live in a flat, but it looks more like a recording studio because I've got I've got helix and things like that. I've got no amplifiers, no no, you know, yeah. but I, I record everything on a <clears throat> on an iMac, um, stuff like that, but. Yeah, obviously, this this has built up over the years, yeah. you know, and it, and, it, and and some of the stuff's really expensive. That's why I got a Helix because I've got a choice of amplifiers and tones and things, and I also have a uh, a Variax guitar which goes, which is by Line Six, uh, their own make, and it it goes use an internet lead to go into the uh, Helix. And then the guitar becomes something else because you can, if you wanted to play in drop D, you just turn the knob, <laughs> automatically changes it. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, but but um, but yeah, it's it's expensive. But um, I, I'm messing about at the moment with a cheap interface. It's you know, you know, little interface costs about forty quid, and someone goes, "Oh no, that'd be no good for recording." Actually, it's not doing bad at all. <laughs> So I'm also a, a experimenting with things like that. Um, but, you, you know, it's, it's, it, that's the difficult part. But if you can, because, I mean, how much does it cost to go into a recording studio these days? Well, Ooh, it, it is expensive. <laughs> but our philosophy is the fact that if we're going to get it the way that we really want it, you then it will be worth it in the end. <laughs> um, we really want to make, in comparison to our EP, um, we have as musicians improved a hell of a lot and obviously you weren't in the band at the time as well yeah. so we're going to try and make it we want to make it one of the best like best. recordings or and production, that, production we that we can ever we can possibly get so all we do is really from gigs we get like averagely from around 50 to 70 quid per gig um depending on where we're performing sometimes we've had the odd festival where we've been paid 100 but it really depends on who you're working with and who's who, yeah. putting it on and everything. And depends how many gigs you do as well that month. Depends yeah. on how much money you make. Because sometimes we'll do two gigs a month. Sometimes we'll do like four, four or five. five. <laughs> and then it it fluctuates quite a lot. Um, so we've been building up the bank account for a good like year. Um, can I... We're getting to... Uh, yeah. Averagely it's about... Uh, <laughs> can I make a suggestion? Something? Right. Now, this guy... On, on YouTube, who, who mixes music, right? And what he did, he went to three or four different people to get to, to get it mastered, right? 
and they they were charging anything from like a thousand dollars whatever down to 20 basically i'll tell you the winner was the 20 dollar one yeah and they're in this country and they're on fiber fiber whatever you call it fiber, yeah. and he goes they're on they're selling themselves and this guy so you need to go on there and, and, and check out because like like he said right one of them was from abbey road right and that that came third yeah and this guy knows what he's talking about about mixing because i do all my own mixing um not and because i i have my own way i want it to sound i want it to sound real yeah you know not (laughs) when you see the waveform not completely totally like because it's compressed that much you know i um and, and that's 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 the way i sort of uh mix mix things but you know all these things are worth looking into because yeah. it's, it'll save you money yeah. and i know what you mean uh right your ep where can you buy that from um i it's like on apple music and i i don't itunes i think that's where you can buy it i think it's on amazon as well um, yeah, amazon like you can buy it on amazon, amazon yeah um we haven't got like physical copies or anything like that but we don't the only reason we don't sell them is just due to the fact that it we don't feel like it completely represents how we sound currently all right our live shows these days especially you've changed a lot of like the drumming to fit um, <laughs> <laughs> to fit what your style, your style yeah. of playing because i mean we have one song on the ep called until midnight that has been written for a good five years now which has gone through um two other drummers beforehand yeah. um and each drummer's put their own different yeah. spin on yeah. it. And our past drummer was the one that recorded it. So that's like the main one that people have heard. But you've changed it since then. I've um, tried to keep it the same, but obviously add like little fills and all that here and there. Just like. Just hey, so I'm, it has a bit of you in it. Yeah, I'm a new person. Like, give me some love. <laughs> Ghost notes and stuff. Yeah. 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 I don't understand a bit about drumming, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it's, it, this, is, this, is, this is good and but you, there's so much you can find on on the internet about all these things and you're not going to get ripped off yeah. and there's people there that are giving genuine things to, and and because i mean i live on youtube so you know i don't have a tv um i'm always on youtube i spend most of my time on youtube <laughs> computers on most of the day but and i'm always looking for new bands and that's what's annoying me. I know I'm sure somebody put me onto you, and I can't remember who it was. And I'm really annoyed about it. <laughs> I'll have to go and check all my Facebook and stuff and see see who's, who sent it. You know. Yeah. Then because when I do this, I always put a bit at the start and a bit at the end. Me me just talking, and then I can put an apology at the start. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is really good. This is this is this is really good. What you. What are you doing? Anyway, I usually ask this. What's your favourite food? I start. Um, I don't know. Um, I think the first thing that came to me really was like a pizza. And I probably... What? <laughs> <So generic. laughs> what what's wrong with a good pizza? Thought, you can, pizza? Yeah, you can like you know, just change it up however you want and all that. Maybe it, like... I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've judged you too hard. You don't even know anymore. Yeah, why? Why <laughs> pick me first? <laughs> um, yeah, I tend to go for like the Texas barbecue pizza, so I'll probably just say that from like Domino's or Groom. Pizza or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. I love cheese. <laughs> cheese. It's the worst part. <laughs> it's the worst part about being a singer because you're not really meant to have dairy or milk or anything like that before you sing but i love cheese so much cheese is like my favorite thing in the world and i've got to avoid it before i go on stage and then after i'm like give me all the cheese possible um so i love that um other than that oh my gosh i went to she knows what i'm gonna say i I went to church um, (laughs) that's what it's called it's called um Temple of, Fun. temple of fun church temple of fun which is ollie sykes from bring me the horizons restaurant in sheffield it's um a fully vegan restaurant and i had these waffle fries 
oh my god it was like the nicest food i've ever had in my whole life i was obsessed i need to go back there and eat everything you gotta go back to church yeah <laughs> I would, it was great there. I did. It was like there was like they had all cool like they had vintage video games. Oh, I could go on and on and on about how much that place was amazing. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I have to agree with Ray on the waffle fries. They were yes, like I thought you were going to come up with cockles. Were, I'm, I'm not going to say cockles. No. Never forget that. It's the bane <laughs> of your existence, cockles. Had it once at college, and then we just. It was the worst smelling thing we've it ever was, smelled. In fact, I threw a whole jar in the bin and just said no, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty grim. I don't know what got into you to bring them into college, I'm going to be honest. Two jars. <laughs> She's the weird one when it comes to food because there's many concoctions that you have made oh my God. that yeah. we don't, nobody should know about because it's the most disgusting thing that, them, you know. no, because it's disgusting <laughs> to the point where I, have, I feel sick thinking about it. Out of date rice. No. <laughs> Yeah, she's a scary one. You don't want to know about her food. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just go with waffle fries because if I say any of those concoctions, I'm just going to get judged. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right. You can't say pizza, it's taken. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? Well, I was going to say chicken on like noodles, but ramen noodles. You can put anything in there. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently mm. as well, so. I, I do love noodles. Me. I like, anyway, I like a good pasta. An egg fried rice. <laughs> yeah. Egg fried rice. Bleh. Egg fried rice was. I still need to beat you. Well, Ray, <laughs> Ray, you talk about cheese, right? I buy cheese slices. I don't put them in anything. I just eat them. Yes. Yeah. The ones that yeah. come in plastic. Yeah, I, yeah. I do that. Well, not the processed, not the processed ones. I know what you mean. I used to eat them, but I just get the slices and. I'm the same, all types of cheese I'm like crazy about. You don't like the plasticky cheese? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, no. Um, whereas I love it. I just, if it's cheese, then I'll just, I love it's it. It's processed. I I yeah. I'm going to, right, I'm going to shock you now because you know when you get the cheese that's in the little plastic? Mm. Oh, yeah. Look at, look at the ingredients and tell me where it says cheese. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's a good point. I best not because then I'll ruin my whole life. I'll be like, no, <laughs> everything's a lie. <laughs> it's the same in like yeah, a okay. Here's an easy that one. Easy, easy one for you. Your favourite drink? Again. Um, <laughs> yeah, alcoholic or normal? Doesn't matter. Oh. I'll probably give both. Um, when I went out drinking with my mate for his 22nd birthday, he took us to this um, like cocktail bar and there was this one drink called the Pineapple Daiquiri. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was, oh, that is the most unsafe drink I've ever had. Um, when it comes to like a normal drink though, I do like me a good Vimto. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Dr. Pepper. Really? No. Yeah. I do like Dr. Pepper, but I don't know, like still Vimto, just like, <laughs> I am the Jack Daniels drinker of the band. I love Jack Daniels um, a lot. All types of Jack Daniels. I'm open to them all. Um, and then I'm also. What other drinks? I like. This is where my health just goes downhill. I love Monster. Monster Energy, specifically yeah, the yeah. new one. They do the Rosa pink one now, and it's so good. Um, uh, I don't think I have. Sponsored by Monster. Yay, <laughs> more Monster that I haven't had yet before. What is this one? Aussie oh, Lemonade. I haven't tried that one yet. It's so nice. I don't know why I tried the Indie Car. Yeah. I might have to try that uh, one later. Lemonade. It is Lemonade. <laughs> it is lemonade yeah. I, I don't know. Um, and then, I'll, yeah, I, I drink a lot of water. Aww. I love water. A lot. I'm very dehydrated as a person, so. To make tea. Yeah. <laughs> Cold tea. Yeah. So whatever you want to do. Oh no. Um. Uh, since you guys have said alcoholic drinks, I'll say mine. Um, probably gin. Gin, gin I love um, gin. Well, gin really. Um, Um, but for normal, uh, I would probably say anything like Coca Cola or Pepsi is probably my normal one. Yeah, <laughs> just say that. Um, rum. 
any type of rum, but only with lemonade. Uh, oh, we got rum with coke, not lemonade. That was, dis that was absolutely cry. disgusting. I did ask for lemonade, though. Yeah, he did miss her, but, you know, gross. <laughs> Normal drink. Apple juice is a good one. Oh, right. Uh, okay, well, I don't drink alcohol. I stopped years ago for various reasons. One, I won't be here now if I haven't done. Um, <laughs> um, so, me, if you like, it's Lucas Aiden Coffee. There you go. Oh, that's a good point. Coffee. I love caffeine. Coffee. Oh. <laughs> we couldn't tell you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, two well, other caffeine freaks. and because I'm old, I've got a tin mug in case I drop it. Yes. <laughs> Brilliant. I've never tried a tin mug. I need one. Yeah. No, but no, it's interesting. It's 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 always interesting to, to to it's surprising when I ask that question how much it just throws throws people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's just an ordinary everyday sort of thing, but it does it just throw people up. Oh, you know. <laughs> but um but no, it's just it's just something I ask and then you you'll get it's yeah, you, know, you get like in the comments section, people agreeing with it, going, "Oh yeah, all right, yeah." Um, but, um, but no, it's 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 always interesting. Do you have any pets? Uh, I have a dog named Maggie. So, <laughs> but a crazy dog. Yeah, a, a crazy dog. Um, runs riot. Yeah. <laughs> right. Anyone else? I used to have a dog called Harley, and now I have a dog called Tony. Oh, what? Yeah. Why didn't you? Why didn't you call the second one Benton? <laughs> it, we, we were debating calling it Davidson, like Dave Davidson, Harley Davidson. Yeah, that's another Harley. Yeah, but it's called Tony. <laughs> I'm not allowed pets. Most of my family are allergic, but we'll count my boyfriend's pets because I hang out with them a lot. He has two cats. One called Squidgy, who's the the older cat the ginger cat and then a little baby um oh, one who is a girl but we've called her frank and frank is a menace to society <laughs> and the rabbits in the local area she keeps coming <laughs> home <laughs> literally she's brought home about like four dead rabbits in the past like two days slightly scared we feel bad um and then she gets really confused that we were like freaking out we're like why are you doing this? And she's like, this is my offering. Yeah, yeah, because um, they, they bring you presents, yeah. She yeah. also likes to wind up Squidge a lot because Squidge is, like, wanting to enjoy her life quite quietly since she's older. And Frank can't cope with that because Squidge is, like, 13 and Frank's only about six months. And Frank just wants to play all the time and she just gets hissed at. <laughs> I feel bad for her, but she's she's a menace. Anyway, yeah. you can talk about <laughs> your cat. My weird situation with pets. So, I live with my mum, and then at my dad's, which I, like, occasionally visit, um, we have a pet cat called Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a cat name. Well, I didn't name it. it was... Frank's not a cat name. That's, That's a not... Well, Frank, Frank was born in October, so it was it, full name's Frankenstein. So, yeah. With Dave, it's um, my youngest sister was, like, born, and then she had this, like, obsession with this film called meet dave and um dave was um the stray cat that my stepmom like found around a workplace so we like took him in and was like oh what do we name the cat and then my younger sister just kept going dave dave it's like i guess it's called dave now <laughs> um and then me and my mom technically have a dog um because her ex-boyfriend like owns the dog mainly but like when he's busy doing whatever we occasionally look after the dog I don't know what's going on with them two and the dog, but <laughs> <laughs> the dog's called Rosie. She's lovely. She's well trained. She's great, and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, All right, the only pet I have is myself. I'm a, I'm allergic to cats, so you know, it's to do with getting hay fever and whatever, and it's just cats, you know, yeah. and they know you're allergic to you. As soon as they see you, oh look, thump straight to you, you know, jump on your lap. And he's thinking, you know, don't you? You know I'm allergic. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So, you've got plans for for music, new music now then, yeah, that you're going to get sorted out. Um, I'm going to check on what you've got on YouTube, right? I take it you've got links on there to all over the place, like Facebook, you on Facebook? Yeah. yeah Facebook, Twitter. Instagram. 
Twitter. We have a Twitter. I don't know if it's used all that much, but it, we yeah. do have a Twitter. I, I checked it. It is quite like active. So. Yeah, we mainly focus on Instagram, Facebook. We have a TikTok page because everyone has a TikTok page. Um, no? We have the most followers on TikTok because we went viral a couple of years ago. Right, I haven't got of 10k or something. I, think. I I haven't got a TikTok. Yeah. It's a scary place. No, that's, I, I mean I do silly things, but I thought, what's the point? Yeah, I'm on, you know, I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, you know, YouTube. I'm thinking, enough's yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, tell you what, I'll, I'll, I don't know how long we've been on, but I'll stop. I'll stop re- recording now because we, because if, if we go on too long, people will be. You know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so so much for doing this. It's absolutely great. Thank we, you for having us. Yes. Yeah, we jumped at the opportunity. We've done the odd interview before. We haven't really done that many. We've done about two. Yeah, two. No, no, I was gonna say I think yeah. it's like third or fourth in it. Uh, third. Had... We've done like a written interview once. Yeah, one... with the guy who is now our manager. Yeah, but and we've done the odd interview before, but yeah, we, we two, love talking. Two about with stuff. Adam, one with Lyndon, and then this one. So yeah, it'll be about four. Yeah. And the nice thing is, you're so easy to talk to as well. We um, do try to be like approachable. So. Oh no, yeah. Well, a lot of cases I've done interviews where I need translators because yeah, right. oh. you know things like that. Um, but um, but no, this is this is great, and I mean I'll always say this. You know, I'm going to go out there and promote you. You put some new stuff up, I'm going to react to you. And then probably later on, we could do a second one. We could do a follow-up sort of thing. You know, do this. So is there anything you want to say to the people out there, what you want to promote and all the rest of it? Go for it. Uh, Mainly, if you're interested, we have an EP that you can find on all streaming platforms. It's called Everything and Nothing and a single called One to Blame, which has obviously been reacted to on this channel already. and new music is coming hopefully by the end I think, or start of next year yeah the whole album should is averagely gonna be there but we're hoping to get singles out back towards the end of this year and new music videos more content and more stuff for the youtube channel yeah. and yeah. we're hoping to do probably come next year like our first proper full tour um so yeah just watch awesome. out have a look Thank you to everyone that already supports us. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you, of course, for everyone that's already like out there listening to our stuff. And um, it means a whole lot to us that anyone's ever interested in our stuff because... And being part of our journey as well yeah. and supporting us and especially the venues as well, like being... The people that we work with, yeah. Yeah. So We're immensely grateful for the people that we've met along the journey and we're hoping to meet many more people that are interested in... Yeah, out yeah. Right, so we'll just say, uh, like, cheerio, cheerio to everybody. I'll stop recording sort of thing, you know. <laughs> Give them the old, uh, when I find it, here we go. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's what happens when you get old. You miss things <laughs> out. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to say cheerio. Bye-bye to everybody. Au revoir. See you later. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. Lovely, lovely people, of course. And, of course get over to their channel go and like subscribe and all the rest of it and check out what they've done and they've got new stuff coming up go and you know just go and go and support them go and support them go and support them a local local band if you like in the uk well local up north but check them out go and check them out they are <clears throat> you know young people and this is what i want to see and of course we've got more females there you know now over here starting to uh, play guitars and stuff and all the rest of it. So get over there. Get over there. Go on. Go over and support them and check them out. Uh, they're on Facebook, TikTok, um, wherever where, wherever they are. Um, all the links will be in the information below so you can get to their channel and everything else and go and check them out. This is what it's all about. Um, and lovely, lovely people. And, uh, yeah, great chat about cheese. <laughs> No, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's what I mean. That's why I call it a chat. It's just about normal everyday sorts of things, and that's what it's all about. Anyway, I just like to say thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so 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 much. And don't forget, all the information will be down below. Uh, thank you for all your comments, your support, and everything else. You're all awesome. And of course, please stay safe. It's all filler. 
We'll be back. Bye for now.